up to your well-being, the devil doesn't want it. He opposes it. He wants to frustrate your life. He wants to attack you. He wants to bring you to, to, to the ground. He wants your marriage to be in ruin. He wants the lives of your children to be in ruin. The devil wants to ruin your business, your profession, your job. He, he, he wants to put you in economic distress. So mm -hmm. that when you are supposed to be focusing on God, you, you are running helter skelter, looking for how to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. And most time the ends never meet. Ends never meet. And so you are distracted and frustrated. And these are all opposition of the devil. So that if case is not taken, you can begin to murmur mm -hmm. against God. And don't, don't think that this is this is a joke. In Numbers chapter 14, you can see the picture of what happened. When the children of Israel were marching towards their destination, the their promised land. And of course in life, they began to lack. They began to lack food, lack water. They, they lacked to the point where, you know, they began to complain. Do you even understand when a family man or woman cannot provide enough to pay bills? I mean, if care is not taken, you, the tendency is for you to start feeling like, what is all this? Amen? Amen. The enemy sometimes makes things difficult so that you can murmur. The Bible says in Numbers chapter 14, the children of Israel murmured and it displeased God. I want to encourage you tonight. I want to pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you receive strength Amen. to continually praise God. According to Psalm 34, Psalm 34 verse 1, he said, I will bless the Lord at what? All, All times. times. And his praise shall continually be in, be in my mouth. I want you to know no matter what the devil and his agents and the circumstances of life are bringing your way, do not murmur against God. Mm. I want you to acquire the attitude, cultivate the attitude to bless God at all, all times. Time. And let his praise continually be in your mouth. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Brethren, as we continue in this wonderful time, I will want to identify some of the oppositions and opponents. Actually, I want I want us to there are three categories of opposition. And each category have opponents. In fact, there are five categories, but I'm going to dwell on three tonight. The three categories of opposition, each one has opponents. You could call them categories, you could call them dimensions of opposition. Number one is spiritual opposition. That is against your life. Remember where we started in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. Apostle Paul had seen great opportunities, open doors, but he said, look, God opened these doors, but the enemy had gone all out to create opposition. He said there are many oppositions, opponents, Number one category or dimension of opposition is spiritual opposition. Number two, the, the, the second category of opposition is the deliberate human agents of Satan. Number three, the third dimension of opposition is the non-deliberate human agents. I'm going to explain them to you. The fourth 
dimension of opposition include the evil system. Hallelujah. Amen. The evil system The fifth dimension of opposition is self. Yourself. And I'm going to dwell on three. The spiritual opposition. The deliberate human agents of Satan <coughs> and the evil system. And we're going to pray against these. Now you are on the line listening to me. And it's possible you are facing opposition from these, from all these, or one of these, or two of these categories of opposition. The Lord is going to direct us for you to understand the, the, the ways to contend with them and overcome them. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, Amen. let's look at the, the spiritual opposition. Spiritual opposition refers to the opposition or obstacles that come from the realm of the spirit, orchestrated and championed completely by Satan and his demons, just to make sure that your life is resisted and stopped. Just to make sure you do not reach or get to where God is has planned for you to get to. And I'm going to mention a number of things. Now, the spiritual opposition. If you look at Ephesians chapter 6, you will see what the the Lord says, because God had already previously, and God is now opening our eyes to see that you need to differentiate between spiritual opponents and physical opponents. We do not deny that we have physical human agents who are opponents to our lives and our well-being. Now, but if you look at Ephesians chapter 6, you will see what the Bible says in verse 12. It says, we wrestle not against flesh and what? Blood. 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 But against principalities. Against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. And against spiritual wickedness in high places. I want you to understand there are spiritual opponents and opposition who are strictly spirits. We are talking about strict spirits. We are not talking about agents now in the human realm. We are talking about spirits who are out to use their spiritual powers to oppose you. Now, let me tell you something. All the categories of things we spoke about you. Hello? About uh, you. About what? You. About you. About you. That the principal opponent is Satan. Who wants to make sure that you will not reach your destination, which is glory. That you will not make it to glory. That is the thing. And so he will do everything. Look, let me tell you, when the devil is opposing you not having money, 
when the devil is attacking your family, attacking your marriage, it's not because he wants to marry or want to become the, the head of your family, not necessarily. It's just because he wants to frustrate you mm -hmm. and make sure you don't make it to glory. If you can turn back, I want you to understand what's going on. Because you need to recognize what's going on here. So, these spiritual opponents, they target, they, they target you from the spirit realm to create havoc for you. Now, let's, let's see how they work against you. How does spiritual opposition and opponents work against you? I just identify the spiritual opponents. They include principalities. They include include powers. They include the, the, the spiritual wickedness in high places. They, they include, you know, the, the, the powers in the realm of the spirit that work against you. What, how do they work against you? One, they invoke spiritual cases that may have been caused by your ancestors. Now, take note of this. What they do, because spirits don't forget. That's how they work against you. Your ancestors, I mean your forefathers or, or foremothers, your foreparents had done some wickedness and thought that it had ended. And while they were doing this wickedness, they had you in their loins. Hmm. And so there is what you call spiritual genetics mm. that works in the realm of the spirit. Mm. Where it just, just like what seed you sow in the realm of the spirit follow the seed you bear in the physical. And I want you to listen very carefully. That's how these spiritual opponents work against you. That they want to return to you what have been sown by your parents. And listen, I'm going to also tell you how to contend with this kind of opposition in your life. So, it, there are so many things that parents did. They get themselves involved in witchcraft, in necromancy, in idolatry, in all forms of wickedness. Some people, some of them were involved in shedding blood. Hmm. Some of them did so many wickedness. And so they are spirits that are assigned to accuse and bring these accusations. And this is what happens about generational and family curses. Because they are demonic spirits that are assigned. They are assigned to make sure that the case does not the case will never be forgotten. So your parents did it and died, but the case never died. Hmm. And I want you to understand that this is what happens over the years. And so there are demons that are assigned to make sure that the spiritual issues crosses. Spiritual activities that were done that could bring about the wrath of God and judgment of God were never rested. So the devil bring it up. And when you begin your life, you never thought of it. So you started going by the ways of the enemy. And so accumulating and, and also creating more problems. And so what the devil does is to bring forward these cases against you and they start working against you. That's number one. Number two, they move people to work against you. Satan can move people, whether they know it or not. They move people to work against your life, to create problem against you. Sometimes they don't even know why, but they are doing it. I and mean, you, you don't know. Somebody can just be careless. Look, there are so many things the, the, the devil does. Satan wants to, you know, Satan wants to create accident. To just to kill you. If you are not in the Lord, and this is why I'm saying to every one of us on the prayer line who are listening, 
I want you please to listen very carefully. When you want to leave your house, you need to cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Because if you are in the Lord and the enemy know you, there are great opportunities for you. He want to kill you, want to eliminate your life. Mm. Listen very carefully. He can he can make somebody who is not in Christ to go and get drunk. After drinking, the person jumps into a car to drive. And then come ahead on you. The devil can use people to eliminate your life. Not that anybody drank and just say, okay, uh, I am going to take my car and crush Mr. A and hit Mr. A and kill him. But that is the enemy preparing the person. And so you need to stay in the secret place of the Most High and constantly dwell in the shadow of the Almighty so that you may be safe. Number three, the, these spiritual opponents, they raise persecution and oppression against your life. They raise persecution. They persecute you to the point that if you are not careful, you start fighting by flesh. You start warring in flesh. They persecute you. They, you, you come under accusation that you never would imagine and think. But it is the devil. Number four. The spiritual opponent works to set you up to sin. I want you to take note of this. They set you up to sin. So that you will no longer become viable. Your value will reduce. I want you to know that God wants to work with you as partner. Use you as a vessel. And when you become dirty, filthy by sin. When you become polluted. You cannot be used until God clean you up again. So what the devil does is to set you up to be defiled. Now, you see what happened in, 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 in Babylon, in Daniel chapter 1. Daniel and his royal seed members, other royal seeds, they were, they, they, they were vessels that God wanted to use in their time to, to bring righteousness among the people that were in exile. In the very first chapter of Daniel, at the very beginning, when Daniel was young, he was presented with the king's meat. But Nebuchadnezzar's meat that bring defilement. Let me tell you something. Who, you who are on the line, you must know who you eat their meat. You must know whose food you eat. Whose table you, you, you sit at. To enjoy the delicacies of the table. Because the table of a man is going to be exactly according to the man's life and character. Whoever prepares a table, the table will be like that person. If a Jezebel prepares table, the table will be like Jezebel. If Nebuchadnezzar prepares a table, the table will be like Nebuchadnezzar. If you are with me tonight... I want you to understand what God is saying. Because if you look at Ezekiel 20, 21 verse 21, you will picture what I'm telling you about Nebuchadnezzar. Because Satan, the, the prince of Persia, the prince of Medo-Persia, who Daniel was going to walk in that region, because Daniel survived five kings. In his life, from Judah to Persia, he survived five kings and five kingdoms. And I want you to understand that they wanted to defile Daniel by presenting to him the food of the king. So if you look at, if you look at Ezekiel chapter 21, in fact, I would like us to read it. Because sometimes we need to see the scriptures to be able to appreciate what, what's going on. You know, let's let's look at Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 21. 
verse 21. Ezekiel 21, 21. Look at what the Bible says. Look at what the Bible says. For the king of Babylon, this is, this is what Nebuchadnezzar and those who succeeded him used to do. I'm talking about Ezekiel 21, 21. For the king of Babylon stands at the fork. That's the two ways. The fork means the, the, the ways that split into two. Very important. At a crossroad, he shakes, okay, in the road at the head of the two routes. He looks for omens. Omens means uh, uh, divination. He looks for omens. These omens are divination, divination technique. And the Bible says he shakes arrows. He consults images or idols. He examines animal liver. This is high level of witchcraft. Mm -mm. No, I want you to understand. In his right hand comes the potent for Jerusalem to set up battering rams, to give the signal for slaughter, to shout out the, the battle cry. To set up battering ramps against the gates. To erect a siege ramp. To build a siege wall. Now, I want you to understand. I, I, don't, I don't want to get into you know, teaching on this tonight. But I want you to understand the kind of, of the, the, the environment that Daniel came into. And the enemy wanted to defy him with the... The, the king's meat, the Nebuchadnezzar meat, which was basically rooted in witchcraft and divination and necromancy. But Daniel resisted it. I want you to know what we are talking about. That Satan wants to oppose your life. He uses many techniques to create things to defy you. Now, if Daniel had agreed to eat the food for whatever reason, he would have been defiled. His value in the kingdom would have been messed up. I want you to, you are listening to me. You may be saying, well, I have to work hard to get by. I have to find food by all means. If I have to give myself to, to, to fornication, to adultery, if I have to take bribe, if, if, if I have to kill, if I, if, if I have to just get by, anyhow. But your value, your value matter, your, your purpose, which is your value. You cannot allow yourself to be devalued. Because what the devil is trying to do is to devalue you through sin. You, you can't allow it. And once you are devalued through sin, your life, every pro, pro, every prophecy. The prophecy that is connected to your purpose and the purpose, your purpose connected to prophecy will now become a failure. They will fail. And I want you to take note of it. Daniel did not go to Babylon just like an ordinary person. Daniel was a man that has prophecy in his life. His life was a prophecy. And his his purpose was connected to that prophecy. And he would not allow himself to be devalued. Now, you are listening to me on the prayer line. Don't let yourself to be devalued by the system of the world, by the world system. Amen. Because the Bible says, love not the world. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, Amen. somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Love Hallelujah. not the world, Amen. nor the things of, of the, the world. world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not Nothing. in that person. He said, but the love of the world includes the loss of the flesh, mm -hmm. the loss of the eyes, mm -hmm. and the pride, the pride of, of life. life. Now, let me tell you something. When you love the world, the love of God is not in you. So, Daniel resisted because these spirits wanted to set up Daniel to sin. Amen. 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 Now, 
one other thing the spiritual position does is to create blockade in the realm of the spirit to stop your prayers. Hmm. And I want you to understand they want to, first of all, set, let me tell you something. You listening on the, on, the, on the line. I want you to understand that Satan does not have power anymore to stop the prayers of the saints. Because of the power that is in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible said, and that's why when you pray, you use the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus name we pray. You need to use, because the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2. That God exalted Jesus and gave him a name above all names. That at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee must do what? Bow. Now, what does the devil do? do? What does the devil do? What the devil does is to weaken your prayer life so that you don't pray at all. Mm. Now, he cannot stop your prayer. He may decide to delay, especially when your prayer is connected with some other human being or within the system. Because sometimes you are praying a prayer that something comes through for you within the present system we are living in. Hello? Because we are dealing with human system. And sometimes some issues also come through the hand of people yes. who are not in the spirit. So the devil will work with them to delay you. They will, they, it will never be denied in yes. the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. But the enemy will try to delay. Okay. But the first thing Satan will want to do is to weaken you not to pray. Yes. To make yes. sure your prayer life is in shambles. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. There are a lot of people in our time Many Christians in our time do not know the power of prayer. Mm. Hey, they will tell you, look, I can sing. They will sing. They will do any other thing. But one thing they will not do is pray. to pray or to, to give themselves to the word of God. They will do anything, but they, do, they can't pray. They can't study the word. So what the devil does to create opposition, because let me tell you something. I want you to know that the extent to which you can go by faith to receive anything depends on how much and how consistent you spend your time in the presence of God. Mm. The man who stays more in the presence of God acquires more power to break through every obstacle. And what the devil does is to weaken your, your, your prayer life. To stop you from praying. And there are a number of people, including some pastors, who do not understand the power of fasting. How can you be a man or woman of God that God has called and by 5 a.m., you're already smelling coffee. You're already smelling. Look, you need to give yourself. And throughout the day, you don't fast, you don't pray. How would you be able to? Look, there's a difference between the business of God and business of the world. You, you know, anybody on Wall Street can go and do anything they like. But when you are handling the, 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 the things, the mysteries of the kingdom, you must walk by the principles of the kingdom. And let me tell you, the principle of the kingdom is fasting and prayer. Amen. And staying in the world. Giving yourself to the world. So the devil will weaken you. He will not want you to pray. He will not want you to give yourself to fasting. He will not want you to spend your time in the word of God. Because the only way you will know God more and more is by through the revelation of his word. God reveals himself through his word. And if you don't study or give yourself to the word of God, you will not know God. The more you know God, the more you are strong. The more you are strong, the more you can do exploits. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
it's also very important to know that what again Satan does and the spiritual opposition and opponent do, what they do to oppose you is to deceive you. They deceive you. They, they want you to go astray. They lead people into false imagination so that you can hear lies and rumors mm. and become distracted by false doctrine. You run after the the you run after the 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 you know the lies of Balaam and uh, of Korah and of Cain. The, the kind of lie, you know, you give yourself to lies. You agree. Because, you know, you want everything, anybody that is going to speak something that is deceitful, that agree with your flesh, you agree. Mm. You run after the person. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there are so much kind of gospel being preached today. A lot of people are preaching only social gospel. How you can get by, become materially prosperous, and you don't care about spiritual things. I want you to know that no matter what you are doing, the major focus should be that you make heaven. Yes. You must be able to make heaven. Men and brethren, you must make heaven. You must make heaven. I also will want to say to us that another way Satan use and fight you is by using certain specialized weapons. Satan have a number of specialized weapons that he uses. Amen. Amen. So many specialized weapons that Satan uses against you. They include, there are so many, but I'm going to just mention a few of them. Using fear, discouragement, misunderstanding, confusion, Satan uses other things, you know, such as temptation, the temptation to sin. These persecution, compromise, compromise. He uses these weapons to 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 weaken you, to attack your life, unbelief, doubt. Satan uses this. All these he uses when he succeeds in ensuring that you are brought down by these. Then he knows that you cannot, you cannot make it. Mm. Now, can I, can I, can I, can I let us focus on something that really baffled me? When you look at Luke chapter twenty-two, what the devil did to. Judas, what the devil did to Judas, you will you you will marvel. The Bible said that in Satan entered Judas, mm -hmm. and in verse three of Luke mm -hmm. chapter twenty-two, Satan entered Judas. Entered now I want you to understand that he deceived Judas to the point because look, the Bible said, "Do not give." chance to Satan. Do not give occasion to the devil. And in the book of John, the Bible actually says that Judas has been a thief. Now, there are certain weaknesses, there are certain sins that you, you allow in your life, you condone in your life, and actually it gives an open door to Satan to come and take hold of you. So, because this man loved money, this man loved money more than God. He was ready to betray Jesus because of money. There are a number of people who are listening to me now. Satan will do everything to make you to hold on to certain sin, which you call your weak point. You cannot be, don't stop marrying and caressing weak point. You need to give it up. Yes. Don't say no, you are weak. When it comes to money, you are weak when it comes to wine. You are weak when it comes to women. You are weak when it comes to sex. Man, you must give up every weakness and be strong in the Lord 
and in the power of his might. And let me tell you something. I want to just outline how you contend with the and overcome this spiritual opposition. Number one, do not give any opportunity to the devil in your life. Don't. Number two, you need to empower your life with spiritual activities such as prayer and fasting. I recommend that. Give yourself to studying the Bible. Let me tell you what the disciples said when trouble started in Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6. I mean, there were troubles before Acts chapter 6. But in Acts chapter 6, when they were murmuring and strife among the brethren, the disciples came, I mean, the, the two of the apostles came to the brethren and said, listen, select from among you men of good report and free us to have time to give ourselves to praying and studying of the word. Amen? Amen. I want you to take note of what the Lord is saying. For you to overcome spiritual, spiritual opposition in your life, you need to do something yourself. It's not how much anybody prays for you or deliver you. You need to be able to acquire the strength to fight the fight mm. with God. The battle is already God's. But God wants you as a co-laborer to know that you have to stand with him. Amen? Amen. You also need to serve God. Give yourself to serve God. Don't just be a, person, a nominal Christian. You need to do something to, with God. That's this is the best way to stand strong and fight. Now, another one. Number three. Do not follow the principles of the world in doing anything. You must avoid using worldly principle. I'm talking about the the, the the worldly the worldly system, the worldly principle in this case has to do with the the strategies and and ways and methods and and and, and avenues that oppose the will of God that go counter to the will of God. You must avoid them. There's no way you can use the principle of ungodliness and please God. You can't please God by employing the ungodly principles. You cannot. Amen. 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 Now, number four. You must be sensitive to the spirit. Now, if you are going to contend and overcome the enemy, you must be sensitive in the spirit. You must be sensitive in the spirit. Now, I want you to note what happened when Jesus was about to go to the cross. And... Simon Peter began to speak to the Lord and say, Lord, don't go to the cross. I will never allow this. We will fight. Now, Jesus recognized that it wasn't Peter speaking. It was who? The devil. It was the devil. He told him, go behind me, Satan. Satan. Because he was addressing Satan that was trying to hide behind Peter to speak to him. He said, go behind me, Satan. I want you to note that you must be sensitive in the spirit. And this is why we need to pray. We need to pray that God will give the church and the, the brethren the, the, to provide men and women in the church who have the gift of discerning of spirit. Mm. So they will be able to know when Satan is in operation, when the devil, when the spirits of the enemy begin to operate. You need to be sensitive in, to the Holy Spirit 
and walk in the spirit. Now, do you know what happened in 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 Acts chapter 16? When that young girl, that young oh, lady, Paul. that damsel was following Paul and Luke and Silas and others with them, following the many days and and prophesying in, in quote, speaking Satan's word that he called, she called prophecy, declaring to the people, these are people who have come to teach us the way of God. Paul knew that this was not God's instrument. This was an agent of Satan. He was sensitive to the spirit. And the Bible say he couldn't take it. He cast out the spirit that same hour. Of course, the devil created so much problem. But we need to be sensitive in the spirit so that you must know the kind of person you, you bring close to you because there are people that the devil prepare to destroy your life. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, number five. You must employ spiritual weapons. Spiritual what? Weapons. Spiritual weapons in tackling issues that relate to demonic attacks in your life. You must. According to Ephesians chapter 6, 13 and 18, there are some of us, look, you need to, there are things you cannot just allow to continue in your life. You need to go for deliverance. You need for somebody to work with you. One other thing is that if you are experiencing certain weakness in your prayer life, get a prayer partner. Get a strong prayer partner who will help to encourage your prayer and your faith. Do not agree to, uh, to, to have companionship with people who will corrupt your good manners in God. You need to avoid them. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 that evil communication corrupt what? Good manners. Good manners. I want you to understand this and be very careful. Um, you need to be able to use the weapons of God to attack the enemy. Now, I also want you to know that you can pray up you can pray about everything. There are certain things you don't need to, to go physically to contend with. You pray about it. You settle it on your knees before you face it physically. Very important. I know that many of us, and I'm going to pray for you now on the prayer line. I don't know what, what you are going through. I don't know how many spiritual oppositions that you are facing. And so many demonic opponents that are all around you attacking your life, attacking your health, appearing in your dreams. But I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm going to encourage you. I beseech you in the name of Jesus Christ to humble yourself this moment. Come with me in prayer and let us pray. I want you to just commit yourself to God. There's, there's somebody that is listening. You, you, your, your, your family is in disarray because there's a demonic spirit that have come. Spirit of misunderstanding. Spirit of disagreement. Nobody ever agrees with anybody. The, the spirit of unhealthy competition going on in your family. It's like everybody wants to be at each other's throat. This is satanic hand mm. coming to scatter. Mm. I, I, I see there's somebody on the prayer line that, that is listening now. I, I see you. And what is written in Zechariah chapter 1, 18, is a reflection of your life and your family. Zechariah chapter 118. I want you to know that there's deliverance through the blood of Jesus. The, the, the power of God works like the carpenter, the, the engineer. There's the, 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 the Holy Ghost come like a great 
a bulldozer to pull down every stronghold. Are you under siege of stronghold of the enemy? God will deliver you tonight. Amen. Is your family, your marriage, your health, is your life under siege? By the powers of darkness, God is ready to deliver you now. And I want you to draw, lift up your hand before the Lord. In every way the devil had created opposition in the realm of the spirit that is manifesting even here on, in the physical against your life, I command the power that you see to the blockade to be broken. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, as Amen. many of you as on this prayer line, who the devil has erected walls of Jericho against your progress, mm. against your life. I command the walls to be destroyed. I command the walls to fall flat in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mighty God, we thank you. Everlasting Father, we honor you. Yes. Mighty God. Father, for this Women that have been under attack of familiar spirit in the dream. Thus, this person that have been seen in, in her dream, the spirit of death and burial and funeral. Lord, we stand against the enemy with the blood of Jesus Christ because the Bible says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb yes, and by the word of their testimony. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. I declare the power of God, the power of the blood yes, against the spirit of death in the name of Jesus. and the demonic spirit, the familiar spirit coming at you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. There's somebody you are being opposed by the witchcraft spirit. There's a Nebuchadnezzar that is working against you. That is going to work divination against you. There's somebody you feel like somebody is working some divination against your life. You know it. Saka Bahaji. Repa Prikutaska. Repapa. There's somebody here. The enemy is doing everything. In fact, you are under constant attack by, by spirit wife and spirit husband. Mm. I come against spirit wife and spirit husband with the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. I send the missile of God against those familiar, those demonic spirit. I command you to come out of her. I break your, your, your attachment to his life even now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I hear the Lord say, because the Son of God, Jesus, sets you free today, you are free indeed. Amen. You are free indeed. There's somebody on the prayer line. Your son is behaving like he's under demonic influence. Your son. You don't know. It's a a very good child that just the the attitude and man and everything changed. Mm. It's almost like it, it, your son is under influence. Mm. Under a demonic influence. Come on, you are a mother. Mm. I want you to hold the loins. Mm. Hold your loins. Masa prakesoka. Repo Santra Mamindo Rubaska. Every opposition that Satan has set up in the realm of the spirit against the future and the hope of this mother, of this father, of this woman, of this man. Father, we come against the enemy. In the name of we Jesus. command you take your hand of that son. In the name of Jesus. Take your hand of that daughter. In the name of Jesus. Take your hand of that son. In the name of Jesus. Take your hand of that daughter. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Mighty God, we thank you. Yes, Lord. Mighty God, we bless your name. We worship you, God. We glorify your name, mighty God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I just want you that is on this prayer line to appreciate God and lift up your hand and just worship Lord. the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Come Jesus. on, just thank worship you, the Lord. In the beauty of holiness. 
Je don't cover yourself with the blood of Jesus Christ because the Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 it says you, you, you and me and all of us that believe we overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Come on, I want you as you lift up your hand in appreciation to God and you have overcome the enemy by the the blood you, of the Jesus. Lamb Lord and by Jesus. the word of your Lord testimony you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We want to thank Reverend Dr. Ugo from the Redeemed Pilgrims Ministry for this awesome message tonight. You can visit the Redeemed Pilgrims Ministry on Facebook. You can like them on Facebook. You can also visit the ministry, which is located in Lithonia, Georgia. And you can also log on to their website at www.redeemedpilgrimsministries.org. And on that website, you'll find more information about Reverend Dr. Ugu and also contacts to the ministry. The phone lines are now open. If you'd like to call in with any questions, prayers, prayer requests, you can do so now. And Pastor Chidi will relay that number, that contact number for you at the end of this broadcast. You can also visit Send Me Radio's website at Send Me dot tk that's www.sendme.tk you can also download our free app send me radio from the google and itunes store you can visit us every week right here on periscope and also on speaker radio we are live on facebook as well we have a live stream where you can listen to our prior line and you can also contact us with your prayer requests. God bless you. The contact number is 0744-033-8317. God bless you and thank you so much for joining us. We also like to thank again Reverend Dr. Okechuku Ugu, who is visiting London all the way from the United King from the United States of America. Would like to thank him. Reverend Dr. Ugu is from the Redeemed Pilgrims Ministry International with the branch located in Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you so much to all our listeners live on Facebook and also our listeners on Periscope. We'd like to thank you for joining in. Just continue to listen out for our, our broadcast and you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Redeem Pilgrims Ministry is also located in Jamaica. So once again, you can visit the website. In Jamaica, in Kingston, Jamaica. In in Old Harbor, Jamaica, in Chapleton, Jamaica, in Hollywood, Florida, and Lithonia, Georgia, the United States, and also in London, we want to thank you. We also, for those of you who are in the United States, we would like you to join us in on the prayer line. We have every Monday and every Wednesday. Um. Eastern time, I mean New York time, New York time, Eastern time, which is 8 p.m. And the number to call for the prayer line in the United States every Monday and every Wednesday, the prayer line number is 641-715-3274. Again, 641 Seven one five three two seven four, and access code is five zero four six zero five. Number sign or pound sign. Thank you and God bless you in the name of Jesus. You can visit us in our uh, um in the United States. Uh, we are located at. 3052 Miller Road, Lithonia, Georgia, 30038. Or Hollywood, Florida, 
you know, at 301, 301 South Christian Drive, um, number 25, Hollywood, Florida, you know, 33021. Um, the meetings, you know, the power prayer on Saturdays in Hollywood is, you know, we invite you, no matter the church you are attending, just come uh, every 7.30. And in Lithonia, Georgia, every Sunday at 10 a.m. and every every uh, Thursday at 7 p.m. for power prayer and Bible Bible teaching and you know Bible teaching. God bless you and have a wonderful time. And I want to thank God for uh, Prophet Chidi. Um, who is in charge of the Redeemed Pilgrims Ministry, London Branch, and Sister Melanie Okore, a very wonderful sister, who has been very resourceful to coordinate our technical staff and our technical crew in this time of you know, uh, broadcasts. We give God all the praise and stand strong in the Lord. And remember... Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. God bless you. And once again, we're broadcasting live from London. So anyone, if you're in London and you'd like to call in right now, the number is 0744-033-8317. You can also download Send Me app, Send Me Radio. Just go to the Google Play and iTunes Store. God bless you. Jesus. All right.